Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about what are scientific articles? Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you what exactly are scientific articles. As you complete your university degree, all STEM majors are going to have to read scientific papers. But what are they? How are they different than regular news articles? You'll find that a lot of your professors just seem to expect you to know. But identifying scientific articles and knowing how to find them is a skill you have to learn and develop. Scientific articles are different than other things you read in five main ways. First, the reason for writing scientific articles is incredibly different than any other type of article that you'll read. The reason for writing a scientific article is so that a scientific researcher can present their research or experiment and exactly why that research is important. Although their disciplines vary widely, all scientists have to have a way of conveying their research and why it's important to other researchers. Scientific articles are the best, most authoritative way to do that. One of the ways you'll be able to identify a scientific paper is because of its unique layout. Scientific papers are usually written in five sections, with a clear heading that separates each section. These sections are the introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. While sometimes for clarity or for formatting necessities, scientists deviate slightly from these headings, you will consistently find these section headings in almost all scientific papers. Remember, science is about consistency. These separations between sections allow researchers in different areas to quickly find necessary information from the papers. If you are wondering whether what you are reading is a scientific paper, think to yourself, does this have clear headings for introduction, methods, results, discussions, and conclusions? If it does, chances are it's a scientific paper. Another thing that will help you identify a scientific article is the audience. News articles are generally written for everyone to be able to read. Books and textbooks are usually written for people who have a specific interest in and usually a greater knowledge of a very particular subject or topic. Scientific articles are written to be read by other experts in highly specialized fields. A lot of the time, if you're trying to read a scientific article and you don't have that highly specialized knowledge, a lot of the terms or phrasings that they use will sound extraordinarily complicated. The researchers aren't doing this to purposefully be difficult. They have to work under the assumption that their readers know these terms because publishers give them a certain length that the paper has to be. If they had to stop and explain all the regularly used terms in their field, they would be using words that they could be using to explain their research. You'll also be able to identify scientific papers by where they are published. There are so many journals for publishing scientific articles out there that it would be impossible to discuss all of them in this video, but you've probably heard of some of the biggest scientific article publishers like Science or Nature or The Lancet, but there are a bunch of smaller, more highly focused journals for every area of science. If it's not in one of these types of journals, it's likely not a scientific article. Speaking of publishers, one of the other big differences between scientific articles and everything else you'll read is the peer review process. Now, the process of journal selection and the peer review process is a lot and probably deserves a video all on its own. Subscribers, let me know if you want to see that one, but a condensed version goes like this. A researcher selects a journal where they would like to publish a paper formats it, and sends it off to that journal for review. When the editor receives it, they determine if it could be a good fit for their journal. And if it is, they'll send it to a group of experts who will read the research with no personally identifying information about the author. Only the editor knows who the researcher 
and the reviewing experts are. If and when the experts give their okay, the editor still gets final say in whether or not the article can be published. There are a lot of places in this process where the researcher can be told that their article can't or won't be published. That means it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to get a scientific paper published, and it requires a fair bit of luck and good timing. That means every scientific article published has gone through multiple revisions and has had the input of many different experts to make the final article. If what you are reading seems unfinished or lacks appropriate references or doesn't include substantial scientific experimentation and support, it's not a scientific article. Now, the big question, where do you find scientific articles? In the past few years, there has been a major push by most governments around the world to make sure experiments supported by government funds are publicly available for everybody. That means many really reputable journals are now putting their articles for free download on sites like Google Scholar, Archive, Microsoft Academic Search, PubMed Central, Science.gov. There are even more searchable engine databases that are behind paywalls, and usually your college or university will provide you those materials for free while you're a student. Knowing how to use scientific articles and back up whatever case you're making is literally one of the most critical tools you will ever use as a scientist. So I highly encourage you to go to one of these free search engines and just type in whatever topic interests you. I can guarantee you that you are going to find out new and wonderful things. Knowing how to read and understand scientific articles opens up a whole new world for learning that should be available for everyone. Thank you for letting me show you how to take that very first step. If you want to know more about our amazing scientific world, make sure you subscribe to Sci vs. Sci so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.